Hello, welcome back to another gas walkthrough. Today we're looking at May 13, 2024's Poured Sons by Clover. My name is Bill Murphy, and today uh, we're going to be solving a genuinely approachable Sudoku. What's genuinely approachable Sudoku, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked, and I'm definitely not just talking to myself in my childhood bedroom like a maniac. Um, Genuinely approachable Sudoku are variant Sudoku. Uh, we create them every day and we post them here. If you haven't seen us before, click, drop a link, uh, drop a like, drop a comment, say hi. Um, I'm solving Clover's puzzle. Clover will be solving, ooh, someone fresh today, uh, soon. Um, and Philip Newman is around. He's not leaving you, trust me. Um, but uh, we create variant Sudoku for your consumption. Hello to the general public. Uh, you can find uh, the link to today's puzzle down in the comments. Um, but you'll also find hat times. Two hats is for a very fast time, one hat is for a pretty fast time. And everyone gets a dinosaur because we love you pretty much equally. Um, yeah, I think that's basically it. Should we get into the puzzle? Let's do it. Um, so, this is Quad Sums by Clover. So, normal Sudoku rules apply. Each box, each row, and each column contain the digits one to nine once each. Now, uh, around each black dot in the puzzle, uh, one of the four surrounding digits is equal to the sum of the other three. Uh, so, um, that's it. So, like, yeah, um, if I was just one, two, six, Three might be a valid way of doing that. So one plus two plus three is equal to six. That's it. That's all you need to know to solve this puzzle. Um, but with that, I might just get into it. Um, I will warn you, today's puzzle is a little bit on the trickier end, I think, for gas. Um, and there's a certain point of this puzzle where it kind of all dovetails. I'm gonna tackle every single way that you could have looked at this puzzle from that one point. Um, because I want to give you all the validation of being like, yeah, I'm right, I'm the genius here. Um, so that's why today's video might be a little longer than the actual puzzle needs. But let's get into it. So if you've done arrow sudoku before, arrow sudoku being uh, where we have a little bulb and we have an arrow that goes across a few cells and whatever the digit in the bulb is, is equal to the sum of the digits along the arrow, You'll know through a couple of things. Uh, we like our three cell arrows. So like we'd have a bulb and our thing going like that. I could turn on the pen tool, but I'm lazy. Um, with that, uh, we know a couple of things. Any three digit sum where they can't repeat must equal six, seven, eight, or nine. So if we have a six, seven, eight, or nine, it must be the total of that uh, three digit sum, unless we have one specific case, which is one, two, and six, which will equal to nine. That knowledge will come back into play later. I am just gonna explain it now, so that way I don't have to keep repeating myself. So, uh, but to start here, five and seven, uh, five and two make seven, we need a, because we don't have a six, seven, eight, or nine yet, we're gonna have to add another number and get our total. We can't add another two to get nine because that breaks uh, Sudoku physics and mathematics, but we can add a one to get eight. So because we have an eight seeing that cell, this must be eight and this is one. Let's go this way. We have a seven. We know the seven must be the total. Uh, these one and two tell us which way around these go. Down here, we have an eight. We know that must be the total. There's a three, so we need to sum to five without using two and three, so that must be one and four. One here tells us which way around that goes. Three and five, we need to add another digit to get a total. Uh, so we can't add two because that would come to 10 and break Sudoku. So we must be adding one and then nine. Any three digit total summing to eight, must have uh, one in it because the lowest three digit total that you can have that some uh, without one is two, three, and four, sums to nine. So I know that I need to place a one here. We now need to make these two digits sum to seven, but they can't use one and seven or two and five. So this must be three and five, no, three and four. This three up here tells us how they go. 
Two over here tells us that two must go down there. This is now five, six, seven. This is three and nine. And this is six and eight. That eight tells us this must be six. This must be eight. Down here in box seven, where does six go? So six goes over here. Five goes over in here. And now this is two, seven, and nine. This nine over here tells us that this cannot be a nine. That's three, that's nine. Now, two and eight over here. It means that this has to be two and eight. But this two tells us uh, which way around that goes. This is now four, six, and seven. And then uh, seven and nine tells us that this can't be seven or nine, meaning that this must be a four, and that's a seven or a nine. And now this four, six, seven tells us that this has the same thing. But, you know, at least we tried. So, three, five, we'll, I'm just gonna clean up my pencil marks for a second. Uh, if you're new here, Sven's uh, Sudoku pad has a thing where it checks to see if your, um, if your pencil marks clash. So they'll go red. Um, I tend to turn with it, I tend to turn it off because I don't really need it. But, um, if you like it, hey, we don't, we don't laugh at accessibility features in puzzles. Now, um, let's, let's dovetail here. So, there just isn't enough information to solve this one. There is enough information to solve all three of these at this point. I'm gonna go through each of them from uh, left to right, and then I'm gonna backpedal, so that way you can go, hey, if I was struggling with that, What's the logic I could have used? I don't know if this is a thing that you all will appreciate, but you know what, screw it, let's go. So, we're gonna place a one and an eight here because those are the last two digits. Now, if this was eight, this would need to be one and two. But if this is eight, this uh, needs to be one. So that can't work. So this would become one and eight. Now. Um, I can't put a one or a two here, so I must place a three. Um, and then five, three, and one becomes nine, uh, which means I could just from there go seven. Uh, now, if that's the way you go, great. Um, I would say that is the easiest way. Uh, they're all relatively fine, but I would have said that's the easiest way to continue with this puzzle. However, let's look at this one. Now, if you put use the conflict checker, if you're not great at scanning, uh, you would notice something very special about this cell. It can only be six or seven. Uh, once I take the seven out of there and make this two or nine, if this is nine, what happens? Um, well, if this is nine, the, the lowest this can be is six, three, and one, meaning 10. So that breaks. So this must be two and that's nine. But let's have a look at this cell. Um, so for it to be seven, this would need to be three, two, and uh oh, that would also need to be two as well. Meaning this is six, this is seven, four, and then you can just unwind a significant portion of the puzzle from there. Finally, Let's have a look over here. Now this has to be five, six, and nine. Can't put a six there, can't put a five there. And this has to be uh, one, three, and five. So nine is automatically the total there. If I have something plus two, this two here giving me nine, well, I know that it must sum to seven. Out of the possible divs we have marked here, one, three, five, and six. The only way that you could make seven out of that is if this was one and this was six, meaning this must be nine, and the rest of this will unfold from there. I'm going to continue on from this point, um, but however you choose to solve our gas, that is entirely valid. We love you. All right, let's go. Uh, five, six, this is three, four, and eight. Um, I did all the work and then just immediately forgot which way around that went. 
uh, sorry, seven and four, six, nine, seven, two, nine, four, five, seven. And then this has to be one and eight, but I already know which way around that goes without having to do any math anymore. Uh, this is three and nine. I still don't know which way around that goes, but that's seven, that's nine. This is two, four, and seven. And now a really cute bit of logic that I really like. First, where does one go in box five? Well, one must go there. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Possibly my favorite pattern of all of Sudoku. Now, we know that the total of those three cells must be six, seven, eight, or nine. Let's figure out which one it can't, can't be. So, uh, it can't be six because six sees all three of those cells. It can't be eight because eight sees all three of those cells. And it can't be nine. Is nine, which is all three of those cells. Now that we know it's seven, and the other digits around it must be four and two. Two and four here tells where the seven is. And the two here tells us that this is two, this is four. We're now just on to finish this puzzle. So, uh, my name is Bill Murphy, um, and it has been an absolute honor to solve this puzzle for you today. Um, Stick around if you've never met us before. Um, I will, weirdly, I'm going to be back tomorrow. Uh, literally, straight after I record this solve, I'm solving tomorrow's puzzle. But um, I hope you've had a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. Um, and you know what? I will catch you next time. Have a lovely day. Cheers.